Hey gang, Sean from The Good Dog. Just making sure this thing's working, this thing on. Got some wind going on out here, so I'm gonna try and hide out and like try not to make it too windy and noisy for you guys. Want to talk really quick. Got a really busy day today. Shelby just left. We're sad, missing her. I know she's embarking on a new adventure, so we're excited for it at the same time. So, um, one of the things that I see that comes up a lot, and I know a lot of dog trainers, um, when they post stuff, um, hear kind of feedback from from owners um, a lot of times in the social media world the interaction world of like posting content and then like hearing back from like owners especially owners there's a lot of this one thing that happens I'm gonna open up my gate and I'm gonna tell you what that one thing is gate please open you guys know how gates work they usually don't ah this one works excellent cool great anyways so Here's the deal. I get a ton of feedback, as I know a ton of other dog trainers do as well, about, let's say I'll post something up. I'll post something up, like I posted up the stuff with um, Belle and Samson um, playing, and versus whether it looked like fighting, or if she was fearful, or she was nervous, or insecure. And I got a lot of great feedback, and then I got some other feedback that was like, well, that would make me nervous, and da 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 da. What, what we get a lot, or what I got a lot of on that, but I get a lot of in a lot of other contexts, and I really want to address it, is singular experience does not create a universal experience, okay? So, your individual experience, and I don't mean the snarky or nasty, but I want to clarify because I think it's easy for somebody as an owner who's had a couple dogs and had a singular experience with even a couple of dogs, and I mean singular, your own experience, just with like your kind of short little like sample uh, or small sample to feel like they've got a handle or an insight uh, or an ability to assess or knowledge or wisdom about a much greater, grander, more universal um, thing, being the dogs. So what's, what I see a ton of is applying individual experiences to a universal thing. So somebody might watch Belle and, and Samson playing and be like, in my house, that'd be a dog fight. I would never let that happen. That's so wrong, you shouldn't be, and, then, and I'm not saying anybody said that, I'm just kind of creating like a, an example. So like, that would be a dog fight in my house, or with my fosters, or whatever, or with whatever, and so I would never, never allow that. I, if I allowed that, if I allowed that kind of like escalation, it would most certainly erupt into a fight. You guys shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't allow those dogs to interact like that. Once again, just an example, not necessarily anybody said that but that stuff goes on all the time when I post videos or a lot of other trainers post videos owners will be coming from their own experience which I totally get because that's their experience but then they make that mistake about critical thinking and critical insight and critical evaluation and they just use their own individual experience which once again I get but then they apply it universally, and that's where things kind of fall apart. So if you were to apply your singular experience to the video I posted, like I've worked with like, I don't know how many, but I something like over a thousand dogs, and I've seen a gazillion different behavior problems, and I've got a really good feel for dogs, and what's right, what's wrong, what's okay, what's not okay. Also, those are our dogs. So I've got an incredibly like individual feel and experience for those dogs. I've lived with Belle for 11 or 12 years. I've been around Samson for a year. I know them and I know how they interact with each other. So it gives me the ability to make more informed decisions about certain things. Now, what tends to happen is that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move away from the Samson and Belle thing. What tends to happen is this is this is a big one guys what tends to happen a lot in the defense or in the defense of different methodologies so I just gave like more of a benign example here's where things get dodgy and not so great this is what tends to happen if I post um, a video of a aggressive dog a fearful dog a nervous insecure super challenged dog and I talk about the methodology talk about the tools we've used talk about the approach and then Inevitably, I'll get a response, as do a lot of other trainers I know, 
a response from, a, let's say, several individuals. They don't know each other, so it's not like a conspiracy, hopefully. Um, but several individuals that will be like, why did you have to use an e-collar on that dog? I train my dogs without e-collars. I train my dogs without prong collars. I just used food. I just taught them to trust me. I just loved on them. I just, whatever it might be, it's the I just. But whatever you just did with your dogs has really zero bearing on what happens in a more universal picture. So just because you can get a result with one dog or two dogs or three dogs or even four dogs does not mean that that's applicable to a more universal large sampling of dogs. And that's what makes dog trainers or professionals the professionals they are. That's like me saying like, I fixed my garage door. It was broken. I dove in, I got creative, and I fixed my garage door. You know what? I think I'm ready to go on garage door forums and start dispensing information because you know what? I know how to fix garage doors because I fixed mine. Now, conversely, if you go on garage door forums, this is a really interesting post, right? And you were like, I only have a unique set of experience, right? Just, just my garage door. This is what worked for me and maybe it's helpful for you guys. It was a hack that I tried with my door and it worked. Now that's different. That's somebody coming from <laughs> common sense land. That's somebody coming from, from, from using a more dis discerning approach to singular experience versus universal experience. So that's somebody saying what I did singularly, individually, and the problem that I solved, or even if I solved my neighbor's next, you know, their garage door as well, it's still a very small sample. That doesn't make you a garage door expert. I'm sorry. It makes you an expert on your garage door that you fixed, or maybe not, maybe you just got lucky. Um, who knows? But this is what we see all the time, guys. We see people posting, commenting, weighing in on situations with a small sample of their personal experience and then trying to generalize that to all dogs. And guys, the reason why dog trainers that do really well and have really great results with a multitude of dogs is precisely that difference. The ability to impact, change, affect, train, work, transform a multitude of dogs with a multitude of issues coming from a multitude of backgrounds and genetics and this and that, that's the difference. So before anybody gets on a social media page or a forum or anything and starts shouting from the mountaintop about how their approach sampled by their one, two or three dogs is, should be an accepted approach, you gotta step back. Guys, you gotta step back. I know my crew who watches here, they're, they're, they're smarter than that. But this is hopefully to get leaked out so other people can see it. You gotta step back and you gotta see that your singular experience has little to no bearing on a universal experience. So once again, all the time, I'll get people saying, yeah, I don't know why you're using those terrible tools. I didn't need to use anything like that on my dogs. Well, you come to find out, it took them three years to get the dog to trust them, or it took them a year to get the dog to trust them, or the dog is still a mess, but like slightly better, or the reactivity is now like still reactive, but like, like slightly manageable, right? I mean, like there's so many details. We could go down this rabbit hole so far. Like it's so easy to sit behind a computer and say like, you know, pontificate about what's worked and this and that. But once again, it's the, it comes back to that same thing of, of what I've asked for over and over again, which is show me, don't tell me. And that really means don't, and, and, and my criteria for that isn't a simple one. It's not show me your dogs, it's not show me one dog, and it's not show me a couple dogs. It's show me, excuse me, show me a bunch of dogs that aren't yours coming in with major issues and leaving without them, right? documenting it, showing real challenging problem dogs coming in with those problems, going through the process, transforming, 
and then moving into a different space and if you can showing it if you're working with clients and things like that not just a shelter or something like that or a rescue or foster showing them actually working with clients and getting the same results so that's really what I'm looking for when I say show me don't tell me because like it's such an easy out to be like, I'll show you my dog, right? My dog came to me like a biting, scared mess. And my dog's aces now. Well, like first we have to like have seen your dog prior. We have to know how bad it was. And then we have to know how long it took and all that. And then it's just one dog. So you found your way with one dog, but what happens when you have 500 dogs or a thousand dogs and they've all got different challenges and different issues and different things like that? Here comes Brittany. Coming down the pike, she ran into traffic today. Come on through lady. Anyways guys, so I wanna keep this somewhat short because I got super, super duper amounts of work to do. Lots of things to get going. Got a client drop off coming up really soon. But I just want to remind people that just because you fixed your dog or a couple dogs or the garage door or your neighbor's garage door, that doesn't make you an expert in any of those fields. Dealing with a lot of issues consistently and consistently yielding great results, that's when you're able to start talking about a process, a program, tools, approach, methodology, things like that. You can't apply your individual experience to a universal generalized experience. It's, an, it's a narrow way of looking at the world, guys, and it's not going to serve you, and it's certainly not gonna serve dogs or owners, because what you end up doing is you end up putting out information that can confuse and bamboozle people because they're like, well, this person said they fix their dog with just hugs and kisses or just treats and da 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 and he stopped biting. And like, that may be the truth for you and your dog, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to work for every dog. And so you have to be extremely exceptionally careful about the information that you disperse and share and make sure that you understand that when you're getting on another page and you're kind of waving your flag about what you've accomplished against what you're seeing on somebody else's page or other results or video or something like that, that you're making the smarter choice not to just directly compare your small sample of whatever you've accomplished against what somebody else is showing with multiple, 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 multiple dogs. It's a very big difference. I see it all the time. It's something I typically just ban and delete because for me, it just means it's somebody that's not thinking. It means it's somebody that's not thinking in a broader sense. It's somebody who's being pretty lazy about stuff. And it's usually somebody that's got some ego stuff involved. It's like, yeah, look what I've done. You know, I didn't need to use these tools and da 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 da. It's like, I don't really have time for that. Now, you wanna show me, like, based on our criteria, all the good stuff, lots and lots of dogs with lots and lots of problems, getting lots and lots of help and coming out on the other side, lots and lots of better, then we can talk. But that's the price of admission. So, don't be that person, don't be that owner, please, that goes onto another page, anybody's page, I'm not just talking about me, anybody's page, and then starts professing about what's worked for them as being universal. Just, just, just changing that alone puts you in a different category of a smarter, smarter human being and a better dog owner and a more empathetic and sympathetic and helpful dog owner that can actually like give information with the caveat of like, but that's just my dog, right? If you're that smart and, and, and if you're that really smart is the word, if you're that smart of an owner to be able to say like, this worked for me and my dog, but it's just me and my dog. Then that's cool. It's taking the ego out of it. It's taking the generalization, the universal universality out of it. And it's really owning just what it is, which could be really cool. This is what I did for me and my dog, and this is what works. Or this is how I choose to live with me and my dog, and this is what works. Or I couldn't do what you're doing with your dogs because it wouldn't work with my dogs. Like, when you own the individual part of it and you take the ego and the generalization and the wanting to like get on the soapbox and you own the truth of the situation that an individual experience does not a universal experience create, 
then you're smart, then you're a smart cookie. Then you're operating from like higher places, right? Then you're doing good stuff. So I just wanted to share that. Don't be that guy, don't be that gal, don't be that dog owner, don't be the one shouting from the mountaintop about your experience and that everybody should be gleaning vast amounts of wisdom from your singular experience or your two or three dogs because it just doesn't add up. You need a lot more than that to make something that has uh, a more, uh, how do I put it? Something that has a more um, realistic, profound, and valuable impact that can be shared. So hopefully that makes sense. I don't know, I'm just trying to get that message across. Not trying to be snarky, not trying to be nasty. I know we all come from our own personal experience. Can't get away from it, it's just how we are programmed. But if you step back and do the smart work, you can actually go, oh yeah, that's just my dog. I haven't seen a thousand dogs. I haven't trained a thousand dogs. Maybe I should zip it up or at least be very respectful about the amount of dogs I've worked with or the caveat that this is just my dog. Do that, I'm on your team. Do the other stuff, I'm not super taken with you. Anyways, hopefully that helps. Uh, I'm gonna go get to work. Lots of stuff to get done today. I think the book is finalized. I think it's rolling out to the printers. Good stuff. I'll talk with you guys soon. Any questions, um, please let's not make this like a big bashing thing where everybody gets in the comments and they're like, yeah, I've seen this, this, and this. Let's, let's leave that alone. Let's not make that, let's not make it a big bash fest. I just really wanted to put that message out there. All right, love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.